I'm Chip. Today I'm going to rebuild a dryer that I bought from a scrapper for $15. Follow along with me as I uncover some of the modifications the previous owner did to this machine. Some of them are shocking. I bought this dryer from a scrapper friend of mine for $15. Bucks. I usually give $20, but there are a lot of issues with this machine. The first issue was with with the electrical cord and, and had hooked up, had a lot of electrical tape on it. So I wind up, I had to change the uh, terminal block on it, as you can see here. And it was kind of challenging, but I got it, I got it done and put, put a new terminal block on it. And then the, uh, the wire itself, I needed new uh, connectors on it. So I, I put new connectors on the, the power cord and salvaged it instead of putting a brand new power cord on because the power cord is in pretty good shape. And then um, I got everything back together and I set it up and, and plugged it in and to see how it worked. And then one of the, the, the uh, connectors came loose. I had to redo that. That was a, a kind of a pain. But I finally got that done and I, I plugged it in, turned it on and it ran pretty well so I, I flipped it up it didn't heat up and I found four of these big screws in it and they had wallered out the uh, the panel and then I opened it up and I found this somebody had stripped this wire and wound it around that and the, the uh, thermostat was just like hanging loose and that right there is a very uh, bad thing to do because it blew the that's the only thing that saved the house from burning down it blew the thermal fuse also the cycling thermostat uh, one of the, the legs on it was was burned off so i knew there was going to be some major repairs on the inside the first thing i was going to have to do was splice the element wire back together with using jumper wires that I get from McCormick because the spade plugs on an element are bigger than, than normal. And I also had to use a smaller spade plug on the cycling thermostat because it, it uses a, a normal spade plug. And I got the, the uh, thermal cutoff kit. I replaced uh, everything in there except for that the little white thermal fuse. But nothing was wrong with it, so I, I left it alone. So you can see me here. I'm, I'm going to uh, kind of clean up the, the mess that I found in there. The uh, wires were all stripped way too long, so I clipped them off. I used my favorite uh, splicing tool, which is my pocket knife. I don't like wire strippers. I never have. I don't, I've always used my pocket knife. And then I took one of the uh, jumper wires that I get from McCormick. They come in packs of two, and I, I use a lot of them. I keep a lot of them on on hand. Some uh, uh, use two or three in my in the service truck that I bring on because it's common to see a element wire burned off of some of these uh, these dryers. And they come uh, with the the wire nuts, and they 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 secure the thing pretty pretty well. So anyway, I, here I'm pulling the old uh, thermostat off, and I'm going to put a new one in. And the trick to making money on these things is to keep the cost of repairs down. A thermal kit, a thermal cutoff kit, doesn't cost that much. And it's well worth putting on because if you sell this thing, you don't really want it to come back to you. And in this video, you can see the the time and attention I put into rebuilding a, a dryer that that I get to resell. And this particular uh, machine was a a challenge. It um, the guy who had worked on this, I guess it was the homeowner. He did some modifications to this machine that I had to undo and redo, and I like to, to fix things back the way they were. Now the uh, the wire that goes back to the timer for the auto side of the timer, the spade plug in it was really loose, so I took some needle nose pliers and I kind of crimped the, the spade plug back where it would fit on the thermostat real, real tight. 
And now I'm looking for a a spay plug connector that, that fits tight on the uh, on the, uh, the socket thermostat. And I use my, these crimpers, these cheap crimpers. I don't like those. I have a better pair at my other shop. I think I'll I'll buy it. Another uh, set of good crimpers because these aren't, aren't good, but they, they work well if you if you make sure you you put the spade plug on there well and use the right uh, color combination on the on the tool. So I'm taking the old burn up it's not gonna thermostat out and I'm re uh, replacing it with a, a new one and I use a, a quarter inch nut driver because most of the the, the bolt uh, screws in these things are, are quarter inch heads there's a few of them that are 5 16 but I use these uh, constantly a lot of people use drills and whatnot but I I don't like to charge batteries and if they'll fail on you at the worst time so I always use those it has given me trigger finger over the years but that comes and goes now here that's the only thing right there that kept the man from burning his house down is that thermal fuse that that blue when he uh, directly wired the hot wire to the element the element was uh, bypassed from the thermostats and it couldn't go off so it it came on stayed on until it burned that thermal fuse out and I think my next video I've, I've seen some horrendous modifications in, in dryers that I don't know why people's houses haven't burned down they're just lucky but a fire marshal would maybe take the back off of a I draw her like that and then see what some people do and they say well here here's your problem right here you bypass the thermal fuse and then you shouldn't have so I, I don't know how many people have burned their houses down uh, working on these things and not trying to repair them to the original standard and that's what you should strive to do anyway I've, I've got everything back together I plugged it in and then turned the, the machine on and you can hear uh, when I bend down. You can hear that the uh, that the drum's got a a little rattle in it. So I knew something was going on inside the machine too. But I wanted to test my work on the back, and sure enough, it, everything worked out okay. Uh, the, it started heating up where it should have. I uh, tried it on the, the low temperature cycle, which which brings it up to about 140 degrees and also brought it up to a high temperature cycle of 155 but that it's I can hear it click off at 155 but the temperature continues to rise as the heat uh, goes through the system until it, it starts to drop back down so all that was good now this when I went around the front this is what I found they had taken these long screws and had secured this front panel at three points and they also use some expanding gorilla glue I think is, is what this is I've used some before in woodworking but it, it expands once you put it in there and when I open the cabinet you can see that huge long screw on both sides securing this cabinet and I, the more I looked at it, it looked like somebody had taken a pry bar and, and gone through it and I when I opened the lid I noticed that the the ground wire for the uh, top cabinet was broken so that was another repair I needed to do put an eye uh, connector on that and I finally I, I got all that apart and the inside of it looked pretty bad it, it wasn't bad I mean it, it, was, it was dirty and so I, I, I took a an air hose and I, I blew out all the dust in the dirt and as much as I could and what I usually do when I get get all this uh, loosened up it, it blows out pretty well 
So then I discovered the reason the drum was making such a noise is one of the rollers was worn completely out. That's a good one right there. And I had to clean uh, the roller shafts. They had hair and, and whatnot wrapped around it. Anyway, I, here you, you'll see me. I'm taking this roller off the uh, support bracket there. The support bracket is a 5 16 uh, wrench. And you have to hold your thumb against the end of that axle because you have that little clip there, the little black clip that fits on it. And you can, you can work those out pretty good, but you don't want to lose it. The next thing you take off is this triangular plastic clip that fits in a groove on there. Here you see me unwinding hair and, and string and, and just nastiness from the back of this. You want this pretty, pretty clean when you put the new roller on. And I had salvaged rollers from other machines that were, were still good. Instead of putting new parts in this machine, I was, I was uh, in the front of the, the machine, I was, I was going to use as many used parts as I could. So I had a, a used roller and I, I put it on and it, it worked pretty well. It was still kind of stiff, but that's normal after all that gunk and stuff had been uh, flying around in there. You can see it on the back of the panel, it, that, that shaft that, that came off the rubber parts of the, of the roller. Here you can see me putting the support back on. I put it on and then you take that metal clip, it presses right back on the, the end of the, uh, the axle. Then of course you want to secure the other end to the frame with a 5 16 screw. If you look over to the left there, you can see some of that Gorilla Glue. I don't know what they did that for. There, there was no reason to do it. I eventually cleaned all that up too. Now when I tested these wheels, they were kind of uh, stiff, so I, I took some silicon spray grease and sprayed both of them. And once I did that, the, uh, the one that I had changed, it loosened up quite a bit. And the other one, it didn't hurt it any at all. You can see the difference when it spins. So now I still have a dirty uh, inside cabinet. And I usually take a broom and I loosen up this dirt. What happens, you have lint and dirt and dust in there. And when I buy these things, they kind of sit outside in the weather and uh, they get hot and cold and damp and that. That dirt just kind of clings to the bottom. So I, I cleaned it up uh, pretty well. And then I take a, an air hose and I blow it all the you know, crap back out of it. So, and it looks pretty good. Of course, I, I spent a lot of attention on the motors. I want to get it as clean as possible. And I kind of lube up the bearings on that. And now I take a putty knife and I'm trying to get this expanding glue off the the cabinet to make it fit better and I noticed he had uh, lost the, the clips that go in the bottom of, of the cabinet and the reason you have a boneyard and you uh, when you take apart old machines that you're not going to use you want to save every piece that you can on there because there's always a use for it you know you may not think you're going to use something but if you don't have it you sure would like to have it. Some of those clips on G machines, they have a clip that goes in the frame there and with a, a little pin that sticks out. Those things are like $25 a piece new. So if you can collect those from older machines, that's great. So I need two of these and I, sure enough, I take my flashlight, look around and I find a bin full of them that I have, you know, saved uh, over the couple years and I orient it right and I kind of stick it stick it in there and I kind of had trouble with the glue I had to get a, a pick and and uh, clean up these square holes to get this this glue back in here but I eventually got them on now I spend my attention uh, to 
put the drum back in, get it set, situated on the rollers. It had good seals on the on the rear, so I didn't change those. And you kind of have to fish in underneath, and you, the the trick to getting the whirlpool belt on is you put it on. You have to put it, thread it through the idler pulley, through the arms of the idler pulley, over the uh, pulley on the motor, and then you get it get it situated. And at this point, I'm looking inside, and I, I see it's pretty dirty. And you got those black uh, chewing gum marks in there. I have to take a putty knife and clean all that out and repaint it. And now the front of the cabinet. At this point, I was thinking I might I might just uh, scrap that because of the screw holes in it. But it, it's in pretty good shape, and the seals on it are, are nice. And I, I'm thinking I can. Probably knock out those screw holes and maybe put some Bondo or something on them and, and I clean it up. I get my uh, air hose back out and I'm, I'm cleaning the, the belt seal and there's stuff stuck in there and there's something stuck in there that, I, that concerned me and it was stuck in there pretty tight and your drum was riding right against that. And I think these things are rimfire. I'm pretty sure they are because I, well, actually I know they are. And uh, you have a rim fire cartridge stuck in the edge of that with a, a drum running over it all the time. And not only one, but there's one on the other side. And it was stuck pretty tight, you know, I jammed it. And of course, the drum was running on the rim of that. I, I can imagine it getting hot enough to, to go off and blow something up. But it, it's always nice to check your pockets. But I find 22 bullets and coins and whatnot in dryers all the time. And this one was particularly dirty. It had all kinds of stuff. In the bottom of it, I pulled pieces of gravel out, uh, deer corn, other things. I don't know, a piece of red plastic was in there too. I get it all situated back back up and I'm, I'm sure I'm checking for 22 bullets at this point. I don't want to sell something that's going to go off on somebody. And I noticed a little fold in the in the seal on on the right hand side there. But I repositioned it, and I, when I was putting the drum back in, I made sure that it it uh, fit right on the on the drum. At this point, you know, you just position. You have uh, two square holes at the bottom of the cabinet that fit over the prongs on those clips that I put in the bottom and you just position it on there and lay it in and then get your things in place. Now, at this point I, I found out why they used those long, uh, it looked like deck screws. Uh, they had, when they took the thing apart, when they put it back together, there's two uh, clips that go that slide over the, the metal that uh, two five sixteenths inch uh, screw heads uh, fit through, and they put it on the wrong surface. They put it on the cabinet surface instead of the the uh, front cover surface. So I, I swapped those over to where they're supposed to be, and it eliminated the need for those long screws. So this second clip was uh, a little harder to get off there, but a little hammering, I, I got it to come off, and I put it in the, the right position. I did a lot of body work on this thing. The, ori the original owner of it, or whoever had it, uh, they did a lot of modifications that should be avoided as a service technician you should always try to repair these uh, machines to factory specs and use uh, OEM parts if possible you know, I got the clips on and I I positioned the tub on the on the uh, front seal and I, I started the 5 16th screw I had, I had to uh, 
play around with that seal a little bit make sure that that fold that was in it was was uh, straightened out so anyway I took another 5 16 uh, screw and I you had to kind of spread the edge of the cabinet apart and line up the, the holes uh, they really did a number when they took this thing apart uh, they took a pry bar or something they, they pried the, uh, the the rolls in the in the steel uh, they kind of spread out a little bit so if these bolts aren't if they're not straight you can take your thumb and you can push the edge of the cabinet over either in or, or out to straighten them up when you tighten them down you don't want to put those those two screws in there crooked those are the really the only two uh, things that hold that cabinet together on the front it, but it's a pretty uh, strong connection with those two clips on the bottom then I plugged in the lid switch I mean the door switch and it was it was a good door switch but the the little clips on top the, the plastic clips there's two plastic clips on top they were kind of boogered up I, I got them back in in line and I, I'm probably gonna have to wind up changing those because they don't hold the cabinet top down like they should and I took a brush and and I brushed all the rust and dirt and whatnot off the top edges I still have to had to uh, I fixed that ground uh, wire I think I did it but I didn't make a video of it uh, so anyway I, all it does is it connects a ground to the cabinet top so that if something happens you, uh, the consumer doesn't uh, hurt themselves now these uh, rear clips that's a that's the one that's supposed to be on there that they had modified the rear clip on that thing that's not I guess they took a piece of metal and bent it to where it would fit they must have lost it so anyway I've got a lot of those uh, laying around so I decided I'd, I'd take their modification off and put the right uh, cabinet clip on it so all that entails is you, is you take it off and there's two 5 16 bolts for those two and, and just one bolt and it fits in there they're pretty tight and, it, and then there's two slots in the top of the the, uh, the cabinet top and you'll see here when I raise it up you take you raise it up like that and you can see there's two slots and they fit right down over the, the curve in those two metal brackets on the back it uh, acts sort of like a hinge and they'll fit the the uh, cabinet top perfect so they'll fit down on these these plastic clips now this wasn't working for me and that's when I noticed that they had taken a pry bar or something and pried forward on the cabinet top and bent the, the rolled metal so in that case you want to do some body work so I took a rubber hammer and I knocked the, uh, the cabinet top back in tried not to put any dents in it and I did pretty well any after I finished but I really had to straighten all that stuff out at this point I was kind of disappointed that I had paid ten dollars and I was having to straighten all this doing all this body work and I hated to have to change this front out because the seals and the the drum seals and everything had married to the that drum and and the if you take something that, that's not this had that has been working together so long uh, if you change it with something else you wind up with squeaks and bumps and thumps and noises that you shouldn't have now once I got all this stuff together of course you have to put the screws back in the, the filter can or I call it the filter can on top of it is a shroud that's where your your lint filter fits there's two screws a heads up on this be sure not to drop those screws down that hole um, there, you can take a shop rack or some stuff stuff in there but make sure you don't leave it in there because that goes whatever you drop in there goes right down to the blower and one of the screws that had come out of there wasn't 
wasn't a factory screw, but I have uh, uh, bins full of them, and I had to kind of pick through it, and I found a, a factory screw for it. It's nice to have these bins full of full of things. Mr. Harper collected all this stuff over the years, and one a, a couple summers back, he sat out there in the in the garage with the five gallon buckets full of stuff and sorted screws and clips and plastic parts and. He did a good, pretty good job. Uh, I bought all those racks for him to do that with. And he had a good time sitting out there talking old times and sorting screws. I took air hose and I cleaned up the lint filter pretty good. It's, it's uh, reusable. It doesn't look very pretty, but you can take a, uh, a wire brush. I usually use a, a brass wire brush and, and if there's any rust or something I scrub that screen real good with it so I turn it on and I push the button and nothing of course you have to look down there and make sure it's plugged in I do that like three or four times a day but I've got to where if it doesn't if it doesn't come on I always check my plug anymore So it comes on ni nicely for me now, and something flew out of the, the back of it. It was a screw that had fallen down in the in the uh, blower and got got thrown out the back. And once it was uh, turned on, it sounded really quiet, and nice. It it uh, it worked very well. So I'll have a a nice dryer to sell someone and I won't be ashamed to sell it because it's put back together right. I still had to do some body work on the back. When I opened that thing up they had taken these roofing these self-tapping roofing screws and put it in the four corners of that and wallered the, wallered the uh, holes out that that the back goes down on so and they had bent up the metal pretty well so I had to straighten all that up. I was hoping I could use the same size screws that I usually do. And the reason I do this is I always think of the uh, the technician that comes after me, or even me, if I, if I sell this and it goes to someone's house and I have to service it someday, I don't want to go there and not have the tools to, to take it apart because somebody put like a 5 8 inch bolt through the top of it with a, a nut in the back. And you see stuff like that all the time. You want to be able to go in there and if you you bring the right tools with you and you know what to expect you can zip in there you can change your thermal fuse in five minutes and you're off to the the next uh, service call so i like to when i rebuild these machines i like to, to build them so that the next guy he has to work on it he doesn't say well who was the rocket scientist that did this and i don't want to be accused of of that so again I use a um, an air hose and blow out all the parts that I can see that rust spot in the front corner I'll sand all that down and I'll paint that cabinet that thing will look brand new if I uh, patch those holes I still might uh, change that front cover or the front panel because those three screw holes and it just bother me I don't like them and I actually it's a it's easier to go out there in the boneyard and find another panel than to sand all that down bondo it up and sand it again and then repaint it so at this point I put it back on my roll around dolly and I turn it up and see what I can do with that back panel And of course the exhaust vent was bent up so I took a pair of pliers and I straightened that out now that looks pretty nice and it won't be hard to get a, um, a vent hose over the top of that 
When I put the when you put these back covers on on these whirlpool type mach type machines, they have a lip on the, the bottom that that goes inside the, the white cabinet part. And I, when I went to put this on, I noticed another area that they had modified. It was bent, and I noticed that all four feet had had been bent and dragged around. So I took a pair of pliers and I realigned the feet on it. And they were kind of sticking out too far. And I'll, I'll uh, screw them all back down to about maybe a quarter inch away from the cabinets, about where I like like them to be. And people accuse me of being OCD, but if you do your tools like that, they'll always be in where you need them, uh, when you need them. So I just put the cabinet top back on and uh, put it back together. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.